Hi, everyone. Glad you're back. I've gotten a lot of requests lately um, to do the faces and draw them, paint them, whatever. And um, I've done a few classes with um, uh, Soul Food and also Life Book. And um, one of the classes that I did, actually, it was funny in both class, um, was um, painting over top of magazine um, photo or pictures of women or faces, whatever. Um, and I've done this before, before I did this class. Um, and I started thinking about it and I thought this would be a really great way for a beginner um, that would like to learn how to draw and paint faces. Because it gives you the, um, uh, depending if you pick a uh, black and white photo or a colored photo, it gives you the right shading areas and it teaches you uh, where it should be. And um, also gives you a little bit more idea on um, anatomy as far as uh, placement of the eyes and nose um, just helps. You could also use tracing paper if you wanted to trace out the face, so the features of the eyes and stuff. <clears throat> um, so I thought this would be a great lesson uh, to do, and I was going to show you how I do these collage um, pages. So these are the two I did. This one was for Lifebook. And this one is for soul food. And the life book one, as you can see here, oh, there we are. The face was painted over with acrylic paint. Same with the hair. And then I did a little bit of pen work. Um, I have a lot of collage on the background. And so you don't have to worry about copyright as far as um, a magazine coming after you saying you used my photo or whatever. Because uh, it doesn't look exactly like the model or the picture. You're changing it. Like her hair's changed. Uh, well, even her face doesn't look the same. Um, so I just um, went through a magazine. And this one was a, mo a magazine for models, uh, a little higher end magazine. Um, I just like them because the pictures are usually larger. Um, but another one, if you're just looking for a head to do, um, get the, um, the hairstyle magazines. They're fantastic because you've got such a huge amount of heads to choose from and different sizes also. Um, or you can go through the, like this, this is a great one too, Allie. Um, so you can get all kinds of different faces. Um, or if you want to even use the bodies, you can use the bodies. Um, it's endless what you can do with it. So what I'm going to do um, to start off with, uh, I usually do my background um, and then I start collaging on top you can do endless amount of things as far as your background you can use stamps you can use uh, scrapbook paper uh, napkins tissue um, stencils pen work whatever you want um, so what I'm going to do is uh, start off from the background and I'm going to use some acrylic paint and also I brought out a big stash of uh, a bunch of napkins. I love using napkins. As you can see I've got all kinds of napkins. So we'll use, see what we can do with these. Uh, I haven't got a theme for it. It's just I'm just going for whatever I can think up. Um, okay, so what I'm going to start off with is uh, just a bunch of block 
mix of color. Uh, the best thing I like to do is only pick about three colors. So I think today what I'm going to do, being that, um, where did I put it? She's going to be, now I could change her. I could make her a brunette or like that's the nice thing about this. Um, she'll be totally different. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is use, uh, maybe I'll look through my, look through these, see what colors I like. Then if you're anything like me, <laughs> I have a ton of scrapbook paper, wrapping tissue. Um, every time I go into a shop that has this napkins I'm looking through it uh, you could actually even get into material it's awesome um, the only thing you have to watch as long as it's not too uh, thick because um, then you have problems if you're gonna write on it or uh, draw on it but for this particular type of application because we're not really drawing on anything because um, we already have our picture of our face. So I'm going to use um, Ultramarine Violet by Golden. And I'm going to use Sap Green and I'm going to lighten it. And teal. Um, yeah, not sure what I'm going to do. So you want to, when you're placing color, you want to put it, um, just not one, it, it, your, your color in one area, you want to put it throughout the page. So I'm going to do this, so I'm going to fast forward it so you don't get bored. It's if I have anything um, you need to know, I will stop it. Okay. I'm going to put some um, of these napkins on it and what you do is they usually have two or three um, plies of napkin and you want to take the top layer where the print is. Um, if you want, you can you keep this and you can actually stamp on it and use it again. Makes uh, pretty neat stuff. Now I like to usually uh, rip mine. Um, it just gives it a nicer look instead of a straight line. Um, You can use the straight line along the edge if you want, but uh, just 
looks neater. It looks it. You don't notice the edge as much, and it kind of fades into the background that way. Oh, if I want that big a piece, you can always add over top if you want more. That's no problem. And the best thing to do is use your with the light tissues or or this stuff. Um, you can actually use your matte medium, the fluid. Put the matte medium down on the area you want to glue it on. Don't try and put it on the um, napkin because you won't be able to, <laughs> able to uh, lift it up. And then just lightly press it. Make sure you have enough the medium. Then wet, you get your brush nice and wet with the medium and start from the center and push it out. That way you don't get a whole lot of wrinkles, unless you want wrinkles. Um, sometimes they're kind of cool looking too. But for this one, I don't think I want wrinkles. The um, napkin does stretch, so you might get a few wrinkles. But see how it's basically uh, the edge has pretty well disappeared. Um, but if you had the straight lines, you'd probably see it. And it's important to get enough of the medium on top. This way, when you're doing the um, painting or glazing, at, wanted to add something onto it, you're able to take it off if you don't like it. Just put this one over here. Yeah, see, takes on the background, comes through. I love this stuff. It's so cool. So if you've got access to gorgeous napkins or tissue, works great. You can make your own tissue, printed tissue too, by stamping on it and using it, which is great. Or I've even uh, put tissue um, on uh, printer paper and then put it through the printer, and that's cool too.
see it. All right. So I like to cut around the shape you want close to the uh, your edge as possible because um, we're only going to be painting her body so um, this hair it's um, there's not much there so what I'm going to do is um, be painting over it most of it so we'll just give it a shape Now you could actually use just her head and make your own body if that's what you wanted to do. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with her. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put her down here like this and then maybe some writing up here. So with the thicker paper, um, it's best to use um, this, the golden matte medium gel, because uh, it's thicker and it doesn't have um, uh, liquid uh, water um, in it. And I find that if you use uh, any, any glue that's fairly um, liquidy, uh, it tends to warp the paper um, and sometimes it doesn't stick properly. Uh, I also saw another artist, collage artist actually, um, that would wet her entire collage piece first and then um, put it down on her um, canvas or whatever she was using um, but not put the uh, glue on the collage piece and it seemed to do it really well she didn't have any wrinkles so I think I'm going to try that one time. So I'm see I'm getting wrinkles right now in this. The face seems to be okay. As you can see, I'm putting it all over the collage piece. That way, if when I paint on it, um, it doesn't soak into the paper and stain the paper. So if I want to take it off or I didn't like it as um, dark, then um, I can actually move it. But you do have to have a good coat or you can't do that. And then you're stuck with it. Okay. Oh, and make sure you put your um, brushes in water right away because uh, if you don't, your brushes will be ruined and um, the only thing I found that will fix them to some to a point depends how bad they are um, is citrusol uh, you have to leave them in citrusol for a day two days if they're really bad and it seems to get the uh, paint or the glue out okay so I'm gonna dry this
zoom in for you. Hope that's good enough for you. Now she has a little bit, I know it's very light, but your cheek always has a cast shadow um, and just a little bit under her nose here. Let's see how I've watered down the um, raw umber and it looks a little bit gray compared to this here. This is the darkest shadow so I've it's still the same color of umber but I've just watered it down a little more. And because I've uh, put the uh, matte medium on here it won't um, ruin the photograph or the magazine image. Okay, well, as you can see, she looks kind of weird. That's okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take my um, titanium, or not titanium, uh, What was this one called? Titanium white and uh, unbleached titanium. So it's the uh, again, water it down. You don't want it really um, thick because these are opaque uh, and we basically start painting in all the areas that you hadn't done first. And I like to paint in the direction that you would um, like a, in a round ball like her forehead would be rounder so you wouldn't want to go up and down like this you would want to go across on a slight curve and that gives the illusion of uh, the roundness same with her cheeks you go around And her, her uh, lip go down, her chin around, okay. So now I want you to make sure your brush is really wet because we're going to lighten that up even more now. So see, I, I'm going over the dark areas now with a very watery and you kind of scribble along the edges of your white and it blends it in more. So it still gives you the shadow through, but it's not as dark. And if we need it darker, we can always add more. 
and try not to do your uh, over your eyes so you uh, have a better idea how they are. Okay, so her neck should be redone. The stroke's going in a circular or curved manner. It's, there's a lot of layers to this, um, so don't get discouraged. It um, just takes a little bit of time. Don't go over your wet areas because you only lift the paint. So you have to wait till it dries or you can dry it with a dryer. So I hope this is um, helping you with um, drawing and, and painting faces. Um, I just thought it would be a good idea to start this way because I found it uh, very useful as far as shading um, and to give you uh, something that you can be proud of right off the bat and it won't discourage you because um, drawing takes time and practice and um, we will get to that but I don't want you to be discouraged because um, with drawing it's all practice failure but learning from your failures um, is very important um, that's really how you learn is by your failures. Um, so this will give you a little bit of an uplift and it's quick and it makes a great page. It's a beautiful page when they're done and it didn't take too much time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put another layer on top of this again. Um, so uh, I'll stop when I start doing the highlights so I can tell you what I'm doing. So I'll speed it up.
All right. Now there's a little bit more. This is um, the muscle that goes up your neck. So you can uh, lighten that more. This part also is um, in the light more. So we can do that. The more layers you do, um, the more opaque your image starts to disappear. But by then, you pretty well know where you want um, most of your paint. So it's not too bad. Um, you can stop whenever you want to. Um, some people like it blotchy. Um, some people like very smooth look um, so feel free to stop when you like it I just got a bit of a, sh of a highlight on her her um, eyelid and this should be a little bit darker or not darker but uh, lighter here because this is the the side that'll have most of the light on her ear Okay, I'll have to dry it again. There's a lot of drying um, to get this proper properly done. for now I'm going to make sure it's very very well dried okay now I'm going to use the um, flesh to add a little bit of color and it's put on the same way.
Okay. Now, um, I'm going to switch the hair for a little bit. Um, the face really needs to dry fully. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint um, the hair a mixture of uh, the raw umber with some bleached titanium. So we'll give it a kind of a dark gray almost shade. And we'll mix it up with uh, straight titanium also, or not titanium, raw umber. So Now for detail in the face, I really like to use markers or um, pencil crayons. The markers seem to work the best for um, the, the acrylic paint. Um, so her lips, I want to give her some color. So I think I'm going to, these are uh, Copics. So I'm just gonna outline. And these are very, very soft pink shades. And like um, if you've used these markers before, um, you can keep applying it so it gets darker and darker, which I love that about these. Um, so as you can see, I've left a little bit of lightness on the bottom lip. Um, it gives it a great look. I love this stuff. Um, 
I also love uh, Fiber Castell um, pit pens or pit, yeah, pit pen. Um, these are great because you can, before they dry, you have to be quick, but um, you can smudge them and um, blend them. So those are great. Um, I also like using uh, micro pens for, say, around the eyes because you can get some very, very fine detail um, with them. Let's see. Now this is uh, 0.05, 0.005, and it's a micro pen. Make sure your work is absolutely dry or it will wreck them. And I don't know how you would fix them, to tell you the truth. a little bit more definition of shading you can use these Signal. These are great. They'll write on pretty much anything. Um, they're great for uh, just sometimes you need just a just a smidgen of um, a line of highlight. Um, just gives it that little bit extra pop. Thank mm -hmm. you.
um, I've decided to add a little bit more collage to this. Um, uh, I find it a little bit on the plain side. And I think I'm going to have her holding a bird. So again, it's from uh, the napkins that I had. And a little more matte medium. So That's pretty good. Um, just needed a bit of a punch of color. And the dark um, greens and purples here seem to give that. Um, uh, 
Now, if I want to do some journaling on this, I could um, put some in right here. I'll take that little piece out here. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, so, you know, you can always leave a space for journaling and then come back to it later when you can think of something you want to put in. Or sometimes that's what you think of first and then you work your um, pictures and, and um, what topic you want for whatever the uh, journaling you'd figured out. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, as you can see, it's not that difficult. And it's just a matter of time. It is a little time consuming, but um, layer after layer. And if you goof up, you just paint over it. Um, like I said, um, mistakes are how you learn. So I hope you enjoyed and um, I'll be doing more uh, videos on faces as I promised before and um, I just have to uh, figure out how I'm going to do this so you're able to see me draw um, so till then have a great day and I will see you later bye mm -hmm.